My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Let me ask you something. Have you ever driven by a mobile home park and seen properties for sale, but not quite been sure how to do it or if you should do it or if a mobile home is a good investment or not? Well, today's special guest knows all about that. Mark Brogan is zooming in from Roanoke, Virginia, and he specializes in doing something near and dear to my heart because, Mark, when I first got started in real estate investing, uh, I, w- I was a big fan of Mr. Scruggs and, and mobile home investing and all that kind of good stuff. Didn't do anywhere near as many deals as you've done, but I did a few and I liked it. So welcome to the show. Looking forward to talking about mobile home investing. Thank you, sir. It's a yeah. pleasure. Hey, so tell us a little bit about what got you into real estate and then specifically how you found out about investing in mobile homes. I started investing in real estate probably 12 to 13 years ago. Yeah. I was sick and tired of working every day for somebody else. Punch and that clock just, every damn day. Yeah, that gets old, eh? Every day, it just seemed like I was in a rat wheel running around chasing my tail. I didn't get started until I was in my early 40s. I'm 56 now. So I started with uh, flipping my first house, one of my neighbors. Uh, It was a big investment. Like a full out fix and flip type thing? Yes, sir. That's what it was. And one of my neighbors was older. And he said, Mark, I'll give you some money if you want to buy a house. I know you're tired of working. And I was like, well, I mean, why not? You know, I figure, okay, we'll give it a shot. But he Did you have a background in construction or, or carpentry or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I've been, uh, I owned a plum. I used to own a plumbing business. Got it. So you're I had been around it a lot. You're a handy kind of guy. Yeah. And my neighbor had been investing for many years. And he said, I'm going to give you some money. You're going to buy the house with my money. But what he didn't tell me was, you're also going to fix the house with your money. (laughs) So I was making $40,000 a year. And it took 30,000 of those 40 to fix that house. The first one I did. And I think we sold it and made about 20 grand off of it about a year later. Did you split it at least? Did you, did you? Get yeah, I gave him his guess. money back, and I gave uh, one of my buddies that was helping me some money back, and it was a nightmare to say the least, but it was much better than a nine to five. I said, I can do this the rest of my life and not work for somebody else. I'd rather oh, kill man. myself for myself. Jesus, you that, you must have really hated your job, man, because that does Oh, it was bad, bad, but they're all bad. I've never in my life. I've got friends that tell me, oh, I love my job. You can't possibly love going to work for somebody else all your life. There you go. All right. So you you did that first flip. It worked out. I just wasn't one of them. So so did you keep flipping for a while or what? what yeah, did I do? did that house. And the worst house I've ever done was the next house, which I should have never did. But I did it. I got involved with a partner that... I had no idea all the issues I was getting into with him. And we bought a house out of state to work on it. Yeah. And me and a couple of my buddies that were in my plumbing business went down South Carolina and we worked on it. And my partner had many issues and he decided he's going to quit working and Mm -hmm. live in that house to fix it. Wow. So next thing I know, he's quit his job. He's lost his driver's license. So now he can't go get any material. So now we've got a house that's seven hours from me, and I'm the only one that can drive. <laughs> oh, so I'm man. like, how are we going to fix this house? No. But that was a nightmare. That was much worse than the first one. So when, when did I you finally get losing. cured of flipping there, Mark? Uh, I'm still not cured of it. I just got <laughs> cured of it from flipping with other people. Uh, and okay. As far as 
partners that don't know what they're doing. I mean, that's what that was my fault for letting that guy get involved with me in the beginning. Yeah. And I should have never, but I did. I learned early on what to do, what not to do. And I'm glad I did. I lost a lot of money on that house, hmm. but it was a learning experience to say the least. And then yeah, I've done different types of deals. I've wholesaled some houses. I've uh, bought a house subject to, you know, and done that. All of them except the wholesales were flipping where I had to fix them and resell them. Hmm. And my mom and dad owned a mobile home park for 30 years. Okay. So I saw all of the negative and all of the bad being your own landlord and dealing with those tenants. And I just said one day, I said, you know, let me just go into some of these parks and see if I can buy some of these small mobile homes. Yeah. And just buying one led to another, led, you know, the park. Well, okay. I'm confused, Mark, because you said your parents hated it. You saw, you saw, yeah, they, the, the they got out of the mobile home business. Yeah. You saw they the sold downside. their park. Why, why did you decide to jump into it if you were familiar with all the negatives? It must have been, you must have known about because I didn't want to be a landlord. Ah. You know, they were landlords, they owned the park and they rented the land. Yeah. And everything I do, I've got two rental properties that are mobile homes, but they had 50 in that park yeah. and they tried to do it themselves. And it was a, a huge struggle for them for many years until they finally just got rid of it. Hmm. Cause they so what, do you, what are you doing pay. different? What are you doing differently than your parents? Then you don't own the park. I have, you're, I have you're help. Properties. Yeah, I have help. The people that work for me do everything for me. I don't do any of it hardly. So what do you still, do? Well, I mean, I still fix the homes. I still go out and buy them, and I help them occasionally work on them. But they do all of the work. My girlfriend deals with the tenants that are in there. She puts them in there by, you know, uh, screening them and things like that. And basically it's just, it's just not being a, like I said, I only have two rentals. So two rentals is very simple to manage. So what, what do you do with the rest of the properties? What What's the your model with these movies? Owner finance them. Got it. Rent to own, whatever you want to call it, to the tenants. And there's no headaches. Very few of those are headaches. Yeah, because now they're owners or owners in training, right? They're not tenants. They don't see yes, themselves sir. as tenants in their landlords, the rich landlord's property. They see themselves as paying out down their own property over time. Yeah. Nice. How many of those kind of mobile home? When did what so first of all, when did you start doing that, Mark? About seven, seven to eight years ago. Okay. I and over that, doing. what's your best guess on how many of these little mobile home type deals you've done over that time? With a guess, probably 40. Nice. We've done them for other people, helping them rehab them, the park owners. Yeah. In exchange, that we could work in their parks. So yeah. I would fix the homes for the owners and they would say, well, if you'll fix this one, maybe I'll let you buy one the next one coming up. Oh, and smart man. One of the ladies we worked for in one of her parks when we first got started, she was very particular. Hmm. Her park was really nice. So when we started working for her, fixing her home, she knew we would fix them. And she didn't want to do all of them herself. So she let us start buying them in her parks. And then over time, we have started going into other parks and go talk to the managers and the owners and yeah. say, you know, what do you want to do with this old mobile home here? Cause it's empty. Yeah. And if you do what you say you'll do and you fix them, they'll let you fix them. They nice. need you. They just don't realize it a lot. Of well, them. yeah, because now they're not making any money off that old crappy mobile. That's mm -hmm. nobody's living in. You go in, you fix them up, you sell them with, owner financing right wow. you get a good tenant in there who's not a renter who's a an owner and is going to take good care of the place plus it's spanky renovated it's not new but it's renovated right it's renewed yeah that sounds like a win-win there mark so walk me through the math if you don't mind if you don't mind sharing how does a typical deal work and i know every single one's different but give me an idea what are you picking these mobiles up for how much is it costing you to fix them up? 
And then how, let's say you're doing the owner financing. Let's look at that. How does that work? And under what circumstances do you do the rent home? Uh, usually when we buy the homes, they range in price from free to $6,000. I, I haven't paid any more that I can remember other than six thousand dollars for them. So the what what ones, kind of vintage are these ones? Like what year? Uh, most of them, we've done them as old as seventy six. Those are usually free because they've been abandoned. Yeah. Most of them are in the eighties, nineties, early two thousands. Got it. But the free ones are the abandoned ones most of the time. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, why? Exactly. Why? So. So free, I would guess the park owner has taken them over, right? So yes, this, it's this chunk of tin sitting on their property. It's an eyesore. It's not making them any money. It's bringing down the value of the whole place, getting complaints about it. So yeah, you're not buying it off them, but you're putting all your own money into doing the renovations and the repairs in exchange for ownership, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Smart. So win-win situation there so give so zero to six grand what are you typically turning around selling them for on owner finance uh, 35 to fifty thousand. i forgot to ask a really important question how much is it costing you to how fix much? them up yeah yeah most of them the most i've spent fixing one was thirty eight thousand. okay well let's say an average because that doesn't that, that yeah most of them are in the High teens and low twenties. Okay, so you get one for six grand. You spend twenty grand on it. You're out into it for twenty six. You're going to turn around and sell that for more or less how much? Double? Thirty five to forty. Okay, I have okay. sold them for forty five. Quite a few of them for forty five. Okay, and then you're selling them. What kind of interest rate are you charging on your note? It's really usually I leave it up to the tenant what they want to pay. So it makes it more affordable for them. But most of them, the lowest is 6%. The highest is 10. They're probably going to start getting higher again as the bank loans go up because, yeah. you know, it's, they can't get a, most of these people can't get a bank loan. So, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And typically how long is, is the term for, for the note that you're creating? Uh, five years usually. Mm -hmm. The longest one I've got is 10 years on yeah, a mobile home. At the end of that time, they're all paid up. It's completely paid off. They own it 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. So you're you're doing the work. You're creating a nice little note for yourself for five to 10 years. You got some nice cash flow coming in over that, over that time. Um, how much are you getting usually for a down payment? Uh. Nowadays, we usually get more. I've gotten as low as $1,000 down. Those are usually the ones that I don't do any work to at all uh, yeah. and just resell them to somebody else. Most of them now between five and 8000 down usually. Yeah. You know, so that, covers just, a, that covers a chunk of it, right? That, yeah, and they yeah. just, we found in this market here, it's it's difficult to get them to come up with more than eight to 10 at the most. You, I think we've been lucky once and maybe got 10,000. Yeah, we did get one time, got 10,000 down. But mm -hmm. Most of them don't have that kind of down payment. Yeah. So we just drop it and let them pay us. Cause nice. I just, we just try to keep it affordable so they can afford it. So they'll stay. Mm -hmm. And I kind of let them name the price. We kind of say, what well, you know, what can you afford a month? And let them name it. That way they'll stay there and pay the deal. That's a good idea. We don't have to take it back. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So how much can you pay a month? Good, good idea for a title for this episode there, Mark. So now we've covered the owner financing side of things. When or why would you do rent to own instead of owner financing? In Virginia, you have to be careful because some of the judges in Virginia, if they're uh, if you're owner financing it, you can get by with it as long as you don't put the home in the, in their name and you leave it in your name. If you put it in their name, they kind of have equitable interest in it, 
Yeah. And it could be difficult to get it back. Not that it would be because most of the time they'll walk away. But if they hire a lawyer and fight you, if you do rent to own or lease purchase or things like that, you can get it back really easy. Oh. But when you're doing owner financing, you just have to be careful because you put it everything in their name. But what saves you even owner financing it is they have to pay the lot rent. Right. So the tenants that are buying the home from you, they're responsible for the lot rent. So when they don't pay the lot rent, the park owners will call us and say, these people are behind on a lot rent. Yeah. And then either I can evict them or the park will evict them. Owner financing or rent to own either way. But they just, you just have to be careful owner financing because, I mean, sometimes it, if they start hiring lawyers and things to come after you, it could be, they could cause you a problem. But again, you're talking about a $10,000, $15,000 trailer. And most people, they're, a lawyer up they for don't, that. they're not, yeah, they're not interested in fighting a whole lot. You know, plus, plus, you're talking you get, 100, plus you got a lawyer that's got to be pretty damn hungry to take, take on a case. Well, like that's that. right. Yeah. Yeah. They don't usually, there's not usually a lot to fight about. Most of the time they just walk away. So how yeah, many of these deals do you have on the go right now, Mark? Uh, Give or take. I think I've got 17 myself, mm -hmm. but they're still paying on. I had a couple of them pay me off a couple of weeks ago, Nice, but yeah. we're getting ready to go look at two more Friday in another park that we've already looked in. So, I mean, they're, the park owners are constantly calling you. Can you go do the, because they have tenants that just do not pay and they have to evict them all the time. And the, so you're getting a lot of free, they, you're getting a lot of free ones then. Pretty close yeah, some of the parks make you pay for them, but some of them don't. Some of them will just say, you know what, just start paying a lot of rent, you can have this thing. There you go, right? You're paying the lot, lot rent, of the plus you're fixing owners. it up. Yeah, and a lot of the parks are, they're teaching park owners that the homes are not valuable. So all the people that are buying parks are just looking to rent land. So they don't want to, they don't want to fool with the trailers. Right. You know, a whole lot, but they have to because tenants walk away and then they're forced to deal with them. Yeah. And you've come in and you've, you've filled that need. You're, you're the guy that can deal with it and solve their problem, make a few bucks, make a good living out of it, doing it yourself. That's really fascinating. So the 17 that you got on the go right now, Mark, give or take, how many of those are owner finance versus rent to own deals? All of those are owner financed and two of them are rented. I, I don't have any rent to own now. Right. And the two the that you rented, were, rented, why did you decide to rent them instead of sell them? One of them's a family member. Got it. They wanted to rent it. And the other one, a lady moved into it. And she said, I'm going to buy it in six months, but can I rent it? And I didn't really want to, but I'm like, why not? I'll just rent it to her. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then you can, when she moves on, you can sell it if you want to at that point. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. She's an older lady. She'll take yeah. care of. So, Mark, um, you got 17 of these on the go. They're pretty affordable, but still, you know, if you're averaging 15, 20 grand and let's say 20 all in for doing these these kind of deals. Yeah, you get whatever, four to six grand for a down payment from the, the buyer. You're still having to come out of pocket 15 to 20 grand on average per deal times 17. That starts to add up there, my friend. So. Uh, if you don't mind sharing, how have you been financing these properties? What do you do for to, to come up for the capital to do these deals? Most of them have been out of my pocket. Yeah. Okay. Within the last year, I've got a lady that's a friend of mine. That's a she's starting to throw money at us because I've been giving her good returns on her money, mm -hmm. and my mom and dad have got to where. They started seeing how good we were doing, doing it. And they were like, well, why don't we do some of these with you? So yeah. now they're starting to get involved in it a little bit. And that's how we're done. I've, I've gotten two of the guys that are helping us are actually doing them themselves too on the side too. So it's, it's working out pretty good. I mean, it's so many I'm around here. You can't do them all by yourself. Nice. They're nice. everywhere. We go usually within an hour of this area. Yeah. 
And there's parks everywhere around here. So if you're willing to drive to work, you can find them. But yeah, the money does add up. Mm -hmm. But I just looked at it like, you know, I worked all my life and I never made any more than $40,000 in a year working. Mm -hmm. So if I spend 40 grand in a year in trailers, or mobile homes, fixing them, I'll get my money back over time. So I really don't care. Nice. And if I run out of money fixing them, then I just tell the guys, you guys take a week off until the checks come in next month and we'll go back to working again. <laughs> you know, because it does add up. It gets expensive. Well, so when you are working with your mom and mom and dad or or this other investor, do you usually kind of go in on a 50-50 type deal? Like they put in all the money, you put in the work, you split the profits, or do you give them kind of a fixed return on their money? How how does that sound? What I've been the one investor that I work with, I've been giving her like she'll buy the trailer and I give her a good return on her money. You know, if I sell it for cash, I told her if I sell it for cash, I'll give you part of the buck. But if I have to finance it, then I'll just give you a good return on your money and pay you back. And the tenants, when they move in, they give me enough down to pay her off and give so her. You're, a so she's putting up the money for the purchase, but you're still putting up the money for the repairs. Uh huh. Ah, uh, are you open to a different idea? Sure. Yeah. So one thing that I've seen a lot of people do, Mark, that works really well in these kind of situations, especially with these, you know, relatively speaking, pretty affordable properties. Like, I mean, all in, if you're paying six grand for the property and 20 grand for for repairs, you're 25, 26,000 into this deal. One thing you might just think about is if you bring on a partner, a money partner, you just figure out the numbers there and you split things 50, 50 with them, right? The, the profits. So they put up all the cash. You bring the deal, you bring the, the crew, you bring the know-how, you get it all fixed up. You get it sold, rent owned, whatever you're going to do for your exit plan. And then the money that's coming in half goes to Mark for doing all the work, half goes to the investor partner for putting up all the money. They're still getting a really good return on their investment. Mm -hmm. As long as you structure it so they get all their money back and, and they get a, a decent return on it. That way you could just really um, rinse and repeat. The other idea that just came to mind for me is you're, you know, depending on the interest rate that you're charging people, you're creating an attractive note. And right now you're holding on to the notes until the cows come home, until they get paid off, which is which is great. The other option is you can sell the note uh -huh. for cash, right? So you can take that note. You're going to have to discount it so the other person that buys it gets a good return. But you could get cashed out, if it makes sense, right up front and, and then rinse and repeat as well. Now, I know I think you like the idea of the long-term cash flow <laughs> from the properties I, I don't blame you that it's nice sense. oh yeah for sure but that way you wouldn't have to be coming up with the 20 grandses to do the repairs your partner's bringing that to the table as well so they buy it and they finance the repairs on it and you still partner on it the numbers work you still partner on it 50 50 she has told me that she would be willing to take payments on her money over time yeah, so but she, if, she didn't really care one way or the other. You know, yeah. So, yeah, that's so a good that, idea. That could be another option. And then, you know, if, if she starts running out of 20 grandses, because again, you're not recycling it as fast. It might take five years for her to get uh -huh. that 20. Then it's not too hard to find other people to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's good ideas. <clears throat> I'm open to anything that, you know, helps because it's, it's a slow process when it costs a lot of money. Yeah, well, you could definitely speed that up because you've got, here's the thing, my friend, you're doing something kind of unique, kind of different. You've got huge supply. You got a huge demand. The only bottleneck's the cash, right? The, the right. cash for the repairs and make, you know, and then you can keep your crews definitely very, very, very busy there. So I think, I think you're definitely onto something there, Mark. So I hey, had another friend. investor tell me one time, <clears throat> he told me to go to the bank and get a personal loan for about 50 grand. And he said, start using that money and stop using your own money. You he said you could do, do it that way. 
yeah, you could do that way as well, for sure. I think the the nice thing about working with private investors is you don't have to be coming out of pocket while you're fixing the thing up. If you're working with a hard money lender or you're working with a bank, day one, that's, you know, payments start coming out as soon as you get the money kind of thing, right? Yeah, gotta, the private be, investors are good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely good that way. Hey, Mark, if people want to find out more or connect with you, what what would you like them to do? The simplest way to find me is Instagram, trailer trash to trailer cash. <laughs> that's the easiest way to find me. And that's the best. That's the best handle I've heard for a long time. Trailer trash to trailer cash. That's a thing of beauty, my friend. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Jacob Juan told me that one time. He said, you should use that. <laughs> I think I and like you did. It, so I've been using it. That's a good one. Awesome, Mark. Well, thanks very much for being on the show. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. All right, I enjoyed it. All right, everybody. Take care. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at moneypartnerformula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.